Hi, Stacey. I think we're, we're live now. We're streaming live. Perfect. Can you see me on Facebook? Yes, I can. So we're live now. Use it. Yep. We're all good. Thank you. All right. Welcome, everyone. Um, this discussion I'm discussing with um, Stacy. Stacy, my friend, she's a master manifesto. Stacy Mehas Lewanski. Yes. Um, yes. She's going to introduce herself. Uh, we've been friends on Facebook. We met. Um, you know how this journey of Facebook is, how it goes. Uh, you meet through someone that knows someone that knows someone that knows someone. And since I met her um, and her crew, she has really been a uh, great influence on me. Um, I've learned a lot from her page, learned a lot from her work, her live videos. Um, just so confident. She's so, uh, so amazing. And how we got about doing this video, I think I, I sent you a message. And, you know, I just expected a simple <laughs> reply. <or something. laughs> and I got a, a revelation. You want to subscribe to my page? I'm like, do you know how amazing you are? <laughs> I just got a revelation, you know, from sending her a simple text. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's how we go. Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about um, intuition, mostly, and how we can use it to our benefit and how we can manifest um, using intuition. So Stacey, you take the stage now and explain, you know, just briefly how we got here, how you got here. How oh, I got here? Okay. Yeah. So I'm just a giant meat suit. <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyway, hi everyone. My name is Stacey Mihas Luanski. People call me Stacey with an I, E-Y-E. Um, I am, I help guide people and hold space for people to find and uncover their authentic self and their authentic truth. And so how I got here to do that job was that I always had a passion for people. Uh, growing up, I was always like the counselor, even as a little kid, I paid particular attention to people's facial expressions and the way that they were raised and how they would interact with the world. I was fascinated when people were passionate about things. So I'd observe, 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 observe. I was always observing outside of myself. I would say I, I, I was, get, even though I had my own passions and, and I was a, had a great childhood and all of that, there was always a little, just a little something that I didn't pay attention to more so than the other. And so that led me into working in sales jobs, you know, like being the leader and so I would lead groups of people. I, I partnered with a jewelry company and I, I was a leader of women all over the world. And what it led me to was that, um, you know, I was a sales leader. So we'd have to talk about goals and money and, and ways to attract business. And that never um, really appealed to me. What, what would appeal to me was more of like why a person would succeed in that business and why someone would fail at that business. I was more, I was curious at the human drive. What drives people? Why were some women making a million dollars a year? And why were some women afraid to pick up the phone and call one person to sell a piece of jewelry? I was fascinated with that. So I became a coach within the sales industry, but I cared more about people's insides than their, how much money they were making or their goals. So um, there was always just a little piece missing and I was on a search for, for God. And I was on a search for meaning. And, a, and I wanted to go to a church on Sunday that I could like feel good about. And I, I, didn't, I couldn't find that anywhere. I couldn't find it. And then I began watching Oprah on Super Soul Sunday. She has a show called on oh, the OWN Network called Super Soul Sunday. And she'd have these next level wisdom teachers come on. And that became my church. I started to get fascinated with these people who had stories of triumph and were following their own inner guidance system, not some dogma or religion. They were following their own inner guide, their intuition. And I knew I had that and I, and I would follow it here and there, but I never really honed in on it until a few years ago, my heart, after some stressful, a stressful weekend in my sales job, 
I, my heart went to 200 beats a minute out of my hands, not just went to 200 and back down. It went 200 straight for like an hour or two until I got to the hospital, had to be injected for it to come down and had to have an ablation procedure and all this stuff. But during that, you know, that was, I, it was probably six years ago. So 39 years old, my kids at home and my heart will not, no matter how I, you know, if I slow down my breath or just calm down or tried to take it easy, the, the, the heart wouldn't go down. So that was a wake up call for me that something else is driving this thing because it was out of my control for once in my life, something was literally out of my control. And so I began really looking at my life and meaning. And I partnered with um, a spiritual teacher, Dr. Shivali Sabari, who you might have seen on, on Super Soul Sunday, but she's written many books and I have kids. And it was all about her passion was about children and being a conscious parent. So I was intrigued with that. I followed that intuitive it was a, when she spoke on Oprah's show, I felt the resonance. So if you ever feel resonance with something that you hear, please know that is your well-being. That's intuition speaking to you. There, everything she was saying was like a wave of truth. I saw my face in her when I was watching it. It was so, it was like we became one. It was really powerful. And so I followed her and it led me to take her courses. And, what, and her courses were all about the awakened heart, finding your intuition within, but doing it in a way, she's also a psychologist. So we dug deep within ourselves and I started to shed all of the things that I'm not. So when I was working in the sales position, there were things that intuition was telling me, no, this isn't you, but I kept going forward because I had these subconscious beliefs that said I had to keep going no matter how I felt. You know how we sometimes we're raised that way, where we have these beliefs that we have to keep going, even though our body, our mind and everything's saying, don't do it. That's not you, but everybody else is doing it. That's successful. So you think that's the way. So, but my body was always telling me, no, 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 no. This isn't it. So I went on my way since 2014 till now. I did deep, I inner work, deep, 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 deep inner work. And then it led me to pure authenticity. And in January of 2020, I had made some very bold decisions that would affect me financially. And I decided that my well-being was more important than the bills, the money, the anything in the world. I got to the tipping point. That's all I wanted was to follow my heart. And so with that bold decision, I quit my jobs and I had my jewelry little business on the side and I planned all this stuff to do. And then COVID hit in March of 2020, all of us. And so the, I could no longer do my jewelry business. And then I was really, the rug was pulled. And from there, I surrendered to a higher power because there was no other explanation then me deciding in January of 2020 that I was gonna make a bold decision based on my authenticity. And then the rugs pulled from under me and I could do none of my jobs to make any income but coaching. And so with that surrender, deep surrender, I'm talking to surrender, it's an energetic shift that says, I don't care anymore, I have no fear. And I began to follow tugs. And one of the tugs said to reach out to these other people that I was participating with, that I collaborated with into a, a small group that was of like-minded people. I reached out to specific people and told them my heart, what's, what was coming from my heart. And similar things were happening to their heart and their mission. And I began collaborating with, with one particular person who resonated, was going through the exact, we were going through the same thing. We wanted the same thing. And through that collaboration, the gratitude started pouring out. So this is part of intuition. Once you start following it, gratitude is just a natural expression of who you are. And with that gratitude came an, a magnetism where people were contacting me and I was feeling this fuel. And I would, and I have been meditating every day since January of 2017. That's a huge part of me relaxing my heart and my mind. 
Once I got a hold of my heart and my mind and I started shedding some psychological things, this authenticity showed up. This magnetism showed up, organically showed up. You need to do nothing. It just does when you let go of everything that you're not and you surrender. And then the magnetism came and the yes came of collaborating. And in about six days, David and I, my business partner, my soul brother, we formulated a group, a 12 week experience called the inner Sangha that came from direct inner wisdom and guidance and intuition. It was written meticulously within I'd say a day and a half. It came fluidly, there was zero effort. And within six days, we got 13 people to join that group. And it's a very highly evolved group. And not only did it grow from there, it's a very layered thing. And now it became a year long course for people to take. And with that came other collaborations that people wanted me to be a part of. And then people started wanting me to coach them one-on-one. -on -one. People that own massive corporations, Fortune 500 CEOs that have had it completely enough with stress. COVID has done this to us. It's pulled the rug. So now people are drawn to this energy. And that's what's happened. It's an energy. I'm no longer this person. I am this an energy that shows up in the now moment authentically no matter what it is there's no more labels and so it's just it's just a sort of magnetism that happened for me wow beautiful i can draw so many things from that like um so many similarities my own journey too um just there, there are a few things i just had to write down <laughs> i was like okay for an observer I, I i think when i was when i was younger um uh Really, I might have been very strange. Maybe I'm autistic. I don't know. Possible. Um, but I just knew I wasn't the same with everyone. Um, I lived an inner life, basically. I always, I was always talking to myself. Um, I never had friends as such. And, you know, just reflecting back, uh, there, there, there are a lot of things I couldn't, um, or I cannot really recall that happened. And um, yeah, I was a, I was a strange person. Basically. <laughs> I was too. I was too. Yeah, so I I actually just lived on the, like I was I was just living on the edge of reality. Um, everybody's reality just wasn't mine. You know what made them laugh and what made them you know, happy wasn't what like I was always like you know, what why did they laugh? You know what's what's, what's so funny. Yeah, so, and I remember always, we had like a big compound or something. So I would always wander off um, into the woods or whatever and just be there on my own and be playing, just happy. Yeah. Without, you know, just, just not being with people. But as I grew much older, you know, I just had to, you know, school and everything, you, you have to belong to like a peer group and all that. I still wasn't that friendly. I just still was, I was still, like, I still knew I was different. But I have a heightened sense, you know, of um, of intuition, basically. And so my my mom always knew that I was going to be different. And she always used to tell me that I shouldn't say any words, you know, when I'm angry, that anything I say, you know, comes, comes true. So I was more like, you know, like a kind of prophetic person. Uh, even though I can't, really, I can't really recall doing those things, you know, even now. Uh, yeah, so that thing followed me. But when I got to high school, about to get to university, I I decided to jump to shift, you know, to try to fit into the world, what every other person was doing, um, because it was really strange. So that was when I started drinking, smoking, going to. I didn't enjoy any of it, but I just had to do it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, I just had to be to see what was happening. Like I just had to belong, you know, to have friends and all that. So that was that was that was my journey of suffering. You know, everything went wrong there because that wasn't my path. <laughs> and I stayed there too long, basically. I, I got a job in the bank, like you were doing some kind of sales and marketing. Um, I actually went to do the marketing, and everything. but the alcohol and everything, you know, the I I lost the job basically. Almost went to prison. Um, so it was when I was lying down in, in the prison cell, very dark in Nigeria. I 
<laughs> I was like, this is this is where like I thought my life was just to end there. You know, I'm like, wow. Recalling where I was coming from, you know, I was like, this cannot be the end of that story. You know? And and it's not like I was lost, like I was always being guided, you know. That's why I didn't die. I've, I had near death experiences, you know, while I was on the wrong path. I'll be driving and my car would be like, so, so more than once, you know, like twice or three times, I had that experience. Um, so I should have been dead a long time ago. So while I was just there, I was like, nah, this is, this, this cannot be the end, you know. And that was how, like you said, I love that word you used, surrender. <laughs> I had to surrender. Like, yeah. I, just, I, I just had to, I had to just let everything, I had to surrender everything I was trying to do. And just, you know, because that voice told me that this was my last chance. So I was like, nah, I have to listen to you now. And that was how I ended my relationship. Luckily, I was able to come to the UK to do my master's. I didn't actually come to do any masters. But I, I was I was coming here to recover, you know, to to you know to rediscover who I was. You know. That was why I came here. I did the masters. I did the PhD because I couldn't. Like, even after the one year of the masters, it wasn't enough. So I started the PhD um, just to have more time with myself. So that was that was my period of solitude, basically. Um, I had to cut off everybody. I don't have any, I, I cut off all the friends that I made along the way. Almost, like almost everybody, ninety-five percent of them. I don't read. I don't talk to. Them. So I was now with myself, started talking to myself again, um, started hearing that voice again. It started getting clearer, much, much more clearer. Um, so I started again. You know, just when I was about to come back out into the world again. That was when COVID hit and um, asked me to go back inside the, <laughs> again, <laughs> do another year. Again. Yeah, go and do another year, you know, <laughs> but, do it, but do it more online. Um, yeah, it's been, yeah, it's just been amazing. Um, like I told you before we had this call, um, my body, well, whatever the higher, there's, there's an intelligence that, um, that guides everybody. And if you can just tune into it, we really don't need uh, how would I put it? We don't need so much stress and you know, and effort. And um, yes, there's going to be effort, but it's, it's hard to describe. It's it's a flowing kind of effort. You know, when you find that your when you find your calling, when you find out what you should be doing, when you find your passion, when you're in the right when you're on the right path, the effort is different. It's not stress. <laughs> you yeah. get what I mean, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah so oh, it's yeah. like effortless effort, but you know, no you're, you're, you're yeah. doing something. No, not really. There's no weight. There's yeah, no weight. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. There's no weight, and things are happening. Things are manifesting. I've been growing. Um, I can see the growth of the, on the outside. I can see the growth, and but most most of the work I do is on the inside. So I've learned, I've, I've learned to love myself. I've learned to, you know, let go of a lot of things that were um, that I picked up along the way that are not needed for me right now. And just by letting go of them, you know, I can see on the outside that people are appreciating, you know, appreciating me for who I am. So I. I no longer feel alone. I no, I no longer feel strange. They're writing on Facebook. And like you, I met someone called Brian McGill. Um, I could see myself in him. I just read his writing on Facebook. I don't know how I was scrolling on Facebook in 2015. I just saw, saw one of his quotes. I was like, wow, this looks like something I used to write. I was like, who is this person? That was how I, I said, looking for him. You know, I typed in his name, said, looking for him. Found him in his whatever. He, luckily, at that time was when he was just about to start his group. I joined the group, you know, more like a mentor. I, yeah, then I got to know him a little personally. Yeah, so I'll say there's always someone that pulls us in somehow. There's always, <laughs> there's, there's always that person. You know, I come from a, a, a religious background and 
there's something I learned you know, uh, that God works through people. That's right. He's not going to God, uh, God is not going to come down and do anything for you. He's always mm -hmm. going to be through people. So that right. voice of God, you know, is in people, and we are also here as guides to other people. And that's what I've learned. So that's why it's good for us to just speak. Don't know who is listening, uh, who might be inspired by this. And, and it's not like you can teach anybody to awaken or whatever. You know, it's, it's, it's just when it's time for them, they will hear your voice. Like there's a saying that uh, when the student is ready, the teacher gets okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's, uh, that, that's, that's, that's been my, my journey. So I'll ask you now. Um, what 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 is this? What is what is intuition? What exactly is this intuition? And I know we don't know where it comes from and everything, but what has what has been your experience with intuition? What is it? And how does it come? What does it do? Intuition is the bridge from the formless to the form, from God, source energy to the form, to the expressions that's being, appearing right in front of your face. So it's like, an, I always say it's like an umbilical cord to divine intelligence, to higher intelligence without, it doesn't have ego. It only has well-being in mind, the universal good for all. It's creative, it's expansive, and it's quiet at first. And it's always available and it's free. And it comes in the being. So when you were talking about that no efforting, what you were really saying is that when we're not in the state of the chase, the forward, when we're more our essence, when we're more sinking into the right here and right now moment, what it is is it's an open space here for infinite possibility and for this higher intelligence to come true because there's a trust here. There's an open trust that's here. When there's a trust that's here and there's no, we're not living in the mind where the mind is constructed to be your computer. It's a beautiful piece of a tool, but it isn't our GPS. It's our tool. So the intuition when it arises at first, you might hear sub, you know, a bunch of different thoughts, a, a bunch of different ideas and getting used to the different voices to say, well, this one, this is intuition and this is ego. Takes time, takes time to establish that with yourself. It's like having a relationship with the now moment, which is very new to most of us because most of us live with our thoughts in the past or thoughts of the future. We're, we're never really residing right here in the now. But when you begin to live your life like this, and we have these glimpses at in, in certain moments, like if you're watching a game, you know, a football or basketball game, and you're really all in and you, you know, you're one with it and you love it because you're all in in the now moment, or when a baby is born, you know, or you're watching the tree move. That's being all in in the now moment. And that is where infinite possibility, that's where intuition comes. And so it's subtle at first, but it, it, you can feel more expansive when you follow it. The only issue that I have with intuition and a lot of people that say that they follow their intuition don't. What they follow is their fears and they follow their old habits. So it's kind of like a, dr a druggie that'll be like, yeah, my intuition saying, my well-being saying to go do another, you know, whatever pill. And it's like, no, 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 no. Well-being is not telling you to do another pill. Well-being, you know the difference between well-being or your intuition and your ego, your limitations, your patterns and your distractions and your addictions. The difference is that one is expansive truth. And you know it's true when you hear it in the depths of who you are. And it's universal good for all. The other one is constrictive. It's a lie and it'll keep you in a loop. It'll keep you on your personal self to have some sort of distorted view of reality based on your personal fears. The other is not like that. The other is expansive, effortless flow. 
So if you ever just want to, you know, just listen and go to silence, go to silence, sit with yourself and just listen. And if you listen long enough, you will get your next best step every time, all day and night. It's available. You got to listen and then form a relationship and stabilize in the present moment with it and get to know these voices. Because all day and night, thoughts are coming and going all day and night. But intuition and insight is spontaneous. And it's calm and it's confident. It's whole, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree completely, 100%. Um, because now, nowadays, I live by intuition. Um, most of my major decisions go through uh, so I know that there are different kinds of um, reasoning. There's inductive reasoning, there's deductive reasoning, and there's intuitive reasoning. Um, even in the sciences, it's, it's a bit debated you know, because they know that there's there's intuitive reasoning that most people use to make decisions. Um, even with all the data, because when you have so many data points, or whatever. In the end, you just make a random choice. <laughs> you know yeah. 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 So, uh, a lot of people use it. Most of this, most people like most people that, that claim to be analytical. In the end, you have to just trust the intuition and take and just make it. And it just comes with the moment. Uh, yeah. So it it is actually there. Is in animals. They have their own gut instinct and whatever this is around. Um, so. It's a force for me in the universe. You know, it flows through everything. Um, because I, I was, you know, I was, I was trying to use my mind you know, to think whether, it's like, is it just in, like, is it, is it in me, or does it come and go? For me, I feel it, it, it comes with answers to my problems. Like, it just comes, it sends a message, and it goes. And if you don't. Pay attention, <laughs> you can miss it. You know, if your mind is is crowded or clouded, or you know, or you're distracted or whatever, um, or 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 you're not in tune basically with your body, you won't feel it because for me, I feel it like an energetic feeling. Um, so it's not like I don't hear that like, hear the voice. I think they are just one and the same, uh, but and it feels true. That's how I know it is true. And like, it's so loud for me now. I'll, oh, I'll just definitely. give an example where we're, 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 we're searching for a house. This is this, this our two bedrooms right now. Uh, we're searching for a house, three bedrooms. Now. And, and my wife had been looking at her for months, like eight months now. And something was always telling me that intuition, of course. So I was relaxed and I was like, no, it's not time, just leave it. And <laughs> when it was time, you know, the, the, the energy came. I felt it like just so, like just go and check. I just I just stood up. She wasn't even around. Just went there and checked. And I saw the place. So applied for it. We had been like they they've been bouncing us you know, from, from like we had gone to like 10, 11, 12 places. You know, we didn't get anywhere. So um, that was the first one I was going to do on my I actually checked out. When we got there, the, the agent said, oh, like, well, there's no competition, there's nobody. We're the only ones, and yeah, it was magic. So I think that was that was like the final confirmation for me. Like, well, not, not confirmation, I've, I've always you know, <laughs> believed, but this was so vivid, like, it was just so, and it's so recent, you know. And I, I just trust it now completely, like, completely. That energy, that voice that comes. So, and you, you said something, you know, like you really need to, you need to be silent. Um, you need to because the noise of everything that's that's around us um, is just a very easy distraction. And so, to me, that's that's what the, that's what the the, uh, the intuition just comes. You know. It comes. I, I don't know where it comes from, and and it is. It is a message. It brings answers as it comes, and it goes, and it leaves no trace. You know, when, when it goes, so for me, it's just um, it's 
comes in energy and I feel it like I can just feel this thing is true. Yeah. And I know I should act on it. <laughs> you know I want to say that there really is don't feel like oh no there's a wrong way and a right way because always will lead you back to love always every way that you choose even if it's the worst way in the world it will still always leave the opportunity for you to love yourself more so every path is to love it's the difference is suffering or no suffering yeah it's yeah, the, yeah. so so you might follow your a feeling that is totally your ego and fear and you think it's your intuition and you follow that and then that what comes out of that is suffering so then you know you you might know no note to self that was actually my fear yeah. you know that wasn't intuition and then the next time something expansive happens and then you recognize in that now moment wow i followed that guidance or it seemed like there was that flow was happening and then you experience something expansive you experienced in that moment your true nature when you follow intuition your life will reflect your true nature qualities of your true nature what are quality qualities of the formless abundance aliveness magnetism happiness joy compassion even grief pain that's all the part of the expansiveness and i call uh, the essence, the all-inclusive resort. You have all these things to experience. But when you're on the path of intuition, you'll know it's your intuition because what's being reflected in your everyday life is expansive and it's reflective of your true nature. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, the, that word you use, was, it was the most powerful word to you, surrender, deep surrender. When you mm -hmm. surrender, the door is open for you for intuition to come in. And you will hardly mistake it because it feels different <laughs> and the voice is different. But it takes time, like you said, you know, like yeah, it takes time. So um you could mix it up with other voices too. I was mixing it up for a while, um, but now it just seems so clear, like it just it seems natural to me now. Doubt it again. <laughs> you know once I hear the other voices, I know I just ignore them. I don't even bother. Exactly. When that one comes, it feels different nowadays. So yeah, it takes time to 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 hone it, but you just have to surrender. Like you have to just give up on so many things. Those are yeah. um those things that we hold on to, those worldly, those worldly things that we hold on to, you know, they are the roadblocks, they are the obstacles for intuition. So you have to remove those of the like remove the that, yes. that yeah. I could give I could give people uh an opportunity right now to come up with a list of things that they need to let go of. And and, and it, tonight's the perfect night to do it because it's the full moon. And yeah. uh this particular moon is the strawberry moon, which I don't know much about this stuff, but what I do know is that I follow my own intuition and then on occasion I'll look up what the moon means and stuff. And sometimes it correlates. And tonight is just a beautiful time of letting go of some things that no longer serve you. And here's how you know what doesn't serve you. The next time you are triggered by something, okay? So something bothers you, whatever arises, like, so something really bad happens, all the other stuff that rises with it. So you can't accept the now moment. You don't want this to happen, you're triggered. Everything else that pops up with it, every thought and sentence are all things to let go of. So you're wow. scared. I, I was scared the other day. My son wasn't feeling good, whatever. And then the thought came up, oh my God, he's going to not be a football player and fail high school. Dude, I'm like, what? That's not even, that's, that's not even reality. <laughs> like all these crazy thoughts, comments, like this is all that needs to be let go of. Then you'll find maybe a couple of like really deep subconscious beliefs that need to be questioned, accepted and blessed and released. So you'll find through your triggers, the things that you need to be let go of. <laughs> yeah, whatever bugs you so badly and it hurts you like, oh, oh my God, that's it's probably something that needs to be unplugged and let go of. Oh, no, no yeah, it just reminded me of something I did. I do, you know, I have this short, Temper, I have this anger like that. <laughs> I get into, um, you know, 
just, you know, just being aware of it really makes me laugh because when I think of what triggers it, it's almost nothing. Right? <laughs> you look back, you're like, wait, I was that mad I, about what? Nah, yeah, why am I this angry? I was like, eh, it's just nothing. And so I, so I know that there's a lot I have to, yeah, I have just to work on myself. <laughs> and yeah, it, it's just been amazing because since, since, I, since I got married, it was just, um, that was when I really, because I, I've, I've always been alone. So now living with someone, you know, um, has really triggered a lot. That, like, I used to get triggered before, but it wasn't from the same person. It wasn't, um, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was just random around. So I, I had the opportunity to blame different people what they did to me and everything. But when I said living with one person, I said understanding you know, that it's actually me. It's not, it's not the person. You know what I'm saying? There's something in me that gets triggered by that by that kind of behavior. So there might be nothing wrong with the behavior that the person is is just you know it's just me that doesn't like it. So, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, yeah. strange, right? Yeah. Isn't so it? I've been yeah, I've been learning a lot from you know from this relationship. Um I've been healing a lot. Um I let go of blame, let go of um so many other things I used to. I used to hold on to, you know, that were blockages for me. And now I just accept, you know, I've been accepting myself more and more and more and more than who I am. And so acceptance is another word, like he word. <laughs> just accept, surrender, then accept. You know, surrender accept is an is. energy. Yeah, yeah, it's an energy within you. It's an energy. You have to get used to the energy now. We're energy. Yeah. Yeah, and so a trigger is an energy. A thought is an energy. A sensation is an energy. And surrender is an energy. And they all are different frequencies. Wouldn't you say? You know, yeah. they, they feel different. Yeah, and they res do. Re resonance is where you feel one with it. Yeah. It's almost like love. It's like oneness. So when you were speak, when you saw your teacher or heard read whatever your teacher wrote, you, you felt a resonance towards it. And that is your first sign for you to follow it. It's strange. I haven't met anyone like that again. I did two people. I don't know, like That's all the you feeling needed. I had just from the writing before I even met him. I just had that. I was like, no, I must look for this person. And you know it's true because not everything you read makes you feel that way. No, 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 not everything I read. No, it, it was just no, his own, like, yeah, no way. That's how you know. That's how you know. That's how you know it's a beautiful masterpiece. Mm. It's okay. about shedding. It's about unlearning. It's not about learning. It's about unlearning. It's about shedding. We're already perfect. We just have all these masks and veils that are an illusion anyway. And once yeah, people, start... yeah, people ask me what uh, what books do I read, what this do I do. I do. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't do any, I don't do any of that again. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember the last time I read a complete book. Like, I can't. Right? You only need a couple sentences. <laughs> yeah, the only book I read completely in years is The Alchemist. Oh, I'm a, that was right. the only one that that like <laughs> like that was drawing me into it, and I me kept too. going. Once I the back. The end. Of, of the book. Most other ones I just get halfway and uh, or even less than halfway. Uh, I I didn't buy the book. I got, I have the Kindle. I'll ha I have to buy it. I just, I just have to buy that. This book. one too. Front to back 72 times. I probably read this one. In New Earth. And, I have that and one. Oprah has a class week by week with him online on YouTube. Yeah, I have that one. I think I have it. I've got oh the, yeah, the, that one. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, this but one. I haven't even yeah. read it. I haven't opened it. This one. The illusion of money. All right. It's a big game changer. If anybody has any issues with money, top of the line, easy to read, wisdom beyond wisdom. This guy was a comedian turned teacher. He meditated. He on YouTube meditated every single day for 100 days and way more than that. But you could see his transformation each day.
he spoke after he meditated, but he did a lot more than that. But this book makes a ton of sense. And now here's my new self. -love. This is my new book. Love this more than anything. Acharya. Sovereign self. Sovereign self. I've been this. Okay. Okay. I'll be getting um, tips from you. So I'll need that money one too because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the money one's really good. I'm manifesting God has been slow. Uh, it, it's it's been a gradual process, but really, you you must be a prophetess because um, that money thing, you know, that's where I am now. Um, that's that's the voice I've been hearing. That's the intuition I've been hearing now. You know, that intuition it's is coming back to me. It's telling me, yeah go here you know i did a few things before before i fell asleep, <laughs> before I fell asleep. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, yeah yeah no 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 so yeah i, I think this, this is just timely for me too everywhere i go now um like that voice again that voice of god is speaking through people that they, you know they're trying to tell me things again like no you just you just um mirrored the message to me, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. So, that's how it uh, works, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's how it works for me, that's how my life has been, that works for me. yeah, that's how the upward movement has been for me, um, yeah, there's, there, there's something, there's something um, strange about the world, and I'm loving it, I just love it because I was, I was strange when I was small, like I said, when I was younger, and this, this is where I belong, this is what I love to Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's it. That's uh, the energy. Yeah. I belong here. This is where, I, that's why I'm talking with you now. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. It's amazing. Um, yeah. So, to, how do I put it? Yeah. Then I wanted to link it, you know, before we started the discussion, I wanted to, to link intuition with um, manifestation. Um, my manifestation is a big, is a big deal in the, in the spiritual community. Um, some people don't believe it uh, has to do. Okay, what does abundance mean to you? Because I, I was on Clubhouse and some people were saying um, abundance doesn't have to be material. It could be um, what is abundance? Because so for me, there should be abundance within and abundance without. <laughs> Because as it is within, you know, so should it be on the outside. Oh, yeah. And I've noticed that, you know, whatever I've been doing on the inside, the I call it work, the acceptance I've been, you know, my gradual acceptance of myself have been reflecting outside. I've learned to love myself more, accept myself, and I've seen that people are loving me more and they are accepting me more. Yeah, yeah. So everything I put inside, you know, translates outside immediately, like almost immediately. Yeah, no gap. Uh, yeah, so my my outside is now becoming a reflection of my inside. Yeah, so that's, that's why that's that's why I was a bit uh, not in sync with what some of them were saying. Maybe they could be right. I don't know. What do you think about those? Is um, I think that if it's not congruent, meaning your your circumstances are reflecting something that is not the truth of you within you that means that you still have limitations to love so within you are still some blocks some energetic um tight energy that needs to be looked at and loved and once this energy goes like this you become the abundance the abundance is the emptiness through which everything is birthed. Abundance is everything is available when you're open to everything, to the infinite possibility. Mm. Abundance is having everything at your fingertips, knowing that you're the source of it all. You are the source of it all. That's what that's exactly what Kyle Cease talks about in this book. You're the source of every dollar you've ever made. We, we hand away our key and our ticket to all these people, our boss, this, that, that. No, you're the source of every dollar. So getting used to your own presence and establishing that, your own presence, and then reflecting when your life is reflecting something that is not congruent to your truth within, 
take a look at that and say, there are some areas that I do need to love. Because the answer is just love. That's the most beautiful thing is the answer is love. It's a, it's a exactly what you said. It's a surrendered, no backpack, effortless love, just being. There's no greater gift you can give to a child, to yourself, to your relationships, to our Zoom call right now than our full presence. That's love. Real love is full presence. So if you're able to look at things that arise in your awareness that don't match, then there's some level, then the way that you're going isn't congruent or in flow until you look at certain things with love for yourself. And then this sort of compassion happens and what it does to the energy, it changes the energy within. And within that energy changes the electromagnetic field or whatever it is, your point of attraction. And things come into your awareness, the new appearances that come into your aware awareness reflect that vibration. But until you love yourself completely, the universe is benevolent, God loves you, God will never let you go until every piece is loved. The all-inclusive resort, you know. Uh, this, 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 just, this feels like a, like a teaching. It really is a teaching. Uh, it's just coming at the right time for me to, I, I think I know what, uh, I know what you mean about, um, you mentioned something about tights. Um, and I think I'm I'm releasing it, you know, gradually now. Um, this is the time. Uh, Tonight's the night, really, with the moon energy too. Like, you got the yeah, universe sorry? on your side. Sorry. Tonight's energy, this new moon's energy. What is what is tonight's energy about? Sorry, I don't I don't well, know. This, this, about. this new moon energy, mm -hmm. it you know, it draws it draws up all of our wounds. It draws up all of the extra remnants of energies that we still need to look at and love. So a new moon often is a time when you reflect on things that you're ready to let go of. And with that powerful draw of energy, so I don't know if it's now that the moon does it, but it actually draws the water from the core of our earth up to, and this is when farmers do special things. And this is the strawberry moon. It's the best time to pick the strawberries because the way it grows. So we're all connected to everything. So this powerful moon draws up the moisture, but the same thing happens within us. We're nature. So during this time, our, the thing, our baggage comes to the surface to be looked at. Did you ever hear that people go crazy during the full moon? Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I, I just know about the rules. What, and, and you know what, it never really, it never really, I mean, it is what it is, but there's no better data than today. That's what I'm saying. You could do it tomorrow. You can do it next week. I'm just saying there's no better day than to look at some pieces that are broken or these pieces that are whatever. The remnants of suffering are still there. And, be able to, and just look at them with love and, and, it, and then your next best step will be revealed. You give yourself that kind of TLC, tender love and care. Yeah. <laughs> the people and the resources and the books and the call this person and do this and do that. And the insight and intuition will come from that energy. The energy of compassion and curiosity are the energies through which intuition can come. I know what is left. For this. It. I know the last blockages, but I've been holding on to them. Um, I've been thinking on to them. Right now. Just you, could human. Huh? you could let them you could, just, them right there, you could let them go right now. I feel I won't be a human being again. <laughs> <laughs> you don't if even I, have to hold on to them. Go it's a story that you even have to hold on to them. You don't. So it's they just a story I'm telling that. myself, right? If you let these energies go right now, energetically. All that's going to happen is more intuition, more abundance, more yeah, joy, more opportunity. It's a story and it arises. And as soon as we attach a person to it, so we, as soon as, as soon as a thought comes, it's like, oh, I'm this. And then we attach Stacy to that story. Then this story has momentum 
and it feels like a life force. And then our, our circumstances will reflect that. But when the thought arises that's not us and we just allow it to fall, we have no story to attach to. There's no perpetuate, we're not perpetuating that reality that no longer has anything to do with us. Yeah, this is just so timely for me. Yeah. I've been deciding when to make that decision, but I will I just have to do it. It's inevitable. True. So yeah, this we need to round up. We've done almost one hour now, I think. Um thanks so much. I know for you're very me. sorry. Thank you for having me. Really. Yeah, I know I you're have... very big on uh, meditation. Um you know. yeah. You, you do this, this, your group is 40 days um, yeah. of meditation, right? I started it in February of 2020 before the pandemic. Guidance and intuition said create a 40 days of meditation page, even though I've done it since January of 2017. Intuition told me to create a 40 days of meditation to help people that have never heard about meditation or care about it to come in and just do 40 days. Well, the pandemic hit on March 13th, which would have been about 40 days from February 1st when I founded it, created it. And, and then guidance said, continue this forever. Yeah, so what's, 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 what does meditation do for us? Um, how does it help us? I know it's, it's about being silent. Uh, some people say you're not supposed to meditate for any reason. Um, that it should just be to how life, just just to be in the present moment. So, what has what has meditation been for you, and how can we use it? So, meditation, what it'll show you when you get still and you listen to your breath, because that's something natural. You're just naturally just watching your breath go up and down, and and what happens is your thoughts will come and say, "Hey, you're busy. You got to go." wash the dishes, you got to go to work, you know, the thoughts will come and go. And during that practice, during that time, what you're doing is you're seeing the thought and you're allowing it to pass and you're coming back to the present moment. So you're gliding your awareness to the now and it builds a muscle. It builds a capacity muscle for you. So when tragedy really does happen in life and you want to come to the source of your strength, you want to get grounded, you, you've built a muscle to snap out of the craziness, to get grounded and centered, to make decisions from essence, not from fear. So really it's just an opportunity to see it all as is. Yeah, all right. Um, can you tell the viewers where they can find you um, online? Yeah, um, my website is Stacy with an E-Y-E, S-T-A-C-I with and eye.net is my website. You can see my services. And I will also list uh, below in this Facebook. Um, I'm doing a webinar for free on Wednesday, um, the 29th, I believe it is. Um, and it is going to be about this course, this 12 week experience that I run that is really next level. It's all about shedding um, all the things that are no longer serving you and we go through this beautiful intimate experience where it intensifies your ascension your awakening so it's pretty cool you could read the oh, testimony so. yeah all right thanks for showing up um I, I i've been looking forward to this discussion and it's just been really magical for me this is just timely like really timely i know i've been i've been, I've been postponing this um and i just had to I have to follow my intuition, you know, <laughs> to ask you that time. It's uh, the most important yeah, thing. And it's just know. coming at the right time because this is just where I am. This is just the best time to to yeah, to, to listen to what you're saying. Um, yeah, so thanks for all the work you do. Thanks for just being alive at this point in time. Thanks for keeping <laughs> up. Me too. <laughs> uh, we've, we're on our own journeys. You know, I've been on my own journey for four, four years now. And I think I'm just, I believe I'm meeting you just at the right time. You know, you're, you're coming as a teacher <laughs> you know, to show, to teach me, to tell me, you know, this is where, this is where I need to be going right now. And this is just my belief. And life has just been magical. 
since I started um, following my intuition fully. Like, my life depends on it now. <laughs> that's, why we're, that's why we're having this conversation, because that's exactly what happened to me. My intuition brought me here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so thank you. And um, we'll see you guys next time. Hopefully, um, you can come back anytime you want, or I can make Thanks. an appearance on your own show anytime. Yeah, you have want. me again. Have me on again. All right. Um, take care, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. I I've stopped the. It's still recording. Yeah, it's still recording. Oh. It's still recording, but I, but I stopped the live video. Okay, I need to stop the recording soon. Right?